Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Ham Nation, episode number eight, recorded July 12th, 2011. A world class amateur radio station. Hello world, this is K9EID, Bob Heil, and I say world because we're being retransmitted on repeaters down in Tasmania tonight, and we're being transmitted over in Europe, and I understand that there's people in South America uh, and South Africa. It's amazing the number of emails and even phone calls that I'm getting. And so we really appreciate everybody around the globe here on the Twit work, uh, Network tonight. And uh, I guess to some of you, it might be afternoon, but, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's like the old margarita guy says, it's uh, 5 o'clock somewhere. Well, it's 8 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> so here we are to have some really good time. So call your neighbors, call your mother and your father, everybody you know, and especially hams, because this is going to be the most exciting show we've done so far. Trust me on this. We've got a lot of things going on. But first of all, let's bring Gordo in. Gordo, how's, uh, how's it happening in good old Costa Mesa? Pink. Whoa, look at him. And uh, we just hung up with King Henry VI, Mac Echo, A.E. Paul was coming through via tropo ducting last week, and through a little bit today and what a day on the airways good to see all of you well we're happy to uh, to have everybody here tonight uh we also have a a, a special guest um i think he's from his backyard but i think he has his clothes on tonight uh, <laughs> no. mr laporte are you here to report in uh yes i am k9 eid bob heil I don't have any call letters yet to, to respond back with. Well, that's I'm okay. Sad. It won't be very long, and you're going to have those. I I talked today to um, uh, Roger. Roger owns a store in Hamilton, Ohio, R&L Electronics, and he said, you want to tell Leo that I got my license when he was nine, nine <laughs> years old, and it took him until he was 10 years old to get the license. Back in those days, they had to mail it to you. And uh, that's not the case anymore, uh, Gordo. You get it almost immediately, isn't it? That's right. As soon as you pass that in, yes, they electronically send for your call sign. Sometimes we can get it in two or three days, not much longer than that. Certainly better than that long, month-long wait many years ago. Oh, Back that's when they great. used the Pony Express. Yeah. Well, I'm well, studying. Now, I wanted to make an announcement this week on the show, Bob. I, I want to take the test. I'm ready. You're ready. Wow. Well, I think gonna... in a week. Can we do it in a, next Tuesday? We can do it. Whatever you need. I'm gonna. I'm going to step out of here, and um, I'd like to have another channel. Go talk to uh, Jerry about her SDR receiver. We're gonna bring her back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gordo, why don't you uh, get on here? And uh, it's uh, radio school time for the Leo and the Gordo. You know, I found. I have to say, I was wandering around. And I found this really old, old book. It was covered with dust. And it's so good. And I, I just find this so useful. This, uh, what is this from? 19, look at, look at Bob Heil on this, on this book here. He's got, I'll tell you how long ago it is. His hair is brown. Oh, wow. No, my hair is just long. <laughs> the, Bob, I just want to say, I, I'm loving this book. This is a great book in conjunction, of course, with all of Gordo's materials that he sent me. I've been listening every day I get in the car and I listen to the, the CDs. In fact, hearing Gordo's voice is kind of funny because I've been listening to you, Gordo, every day for the last two weeks. And I got the book and I am really, I feel like I am ready. But Gordo, I want to ask you a question. I'm listening. So I feel pretty good about the technician. I, I think I'm going to be able to ace that, but I was wondering, should I, at the same time as I take the technician, maybe take the general too? What, what do you think? Yes. 
I think you should because um, if you don't pass it, I'm pretty sure you will, but if you don't pass it, it's not like it hangs over you. Uh, there's no record of it, and uh, you'll end up with your technician class license, and you'll know what the general is all about because you gave it a try. So, heck, yeah, give it all a right. try. I'm ready. I ordered, Gordon, I ordered your – oh, I was really ambitious here. Not only did I order your, Gordon, your, uh, your general materials, including the software – but I also ordered your extra materials. Oh, well, it's already on its way even before you <laughs> ordered it. So. Nonetheless, uh, just jump right in there, and you I'm should be ready. able to speed through and uh, give it a try to lose. I am so excited. So I'm hoping with any luck I'll pass next week. I'll have those calls in just a few days. And by the time we open the studio, uh, well, July 24th, a week from Sunday, we're opening, but we're having the big party August 21st. And we're hoping to make that a ham weekend, that whole weekend, let hams come uh, and use the gear the, and, and broadcast from uh, from our – in fact, I think, you, I think you were talking, Gordo, about getting some event call sign for that. Well, we may end up with a very special call sign, including yours, Leo. And we've got all of the ham community in the Bay Area watching and listening tonight. And they're all on over and have one heck of a great party. Watch that ICOM gear go up. Big antennas that they're bringing for you to try out. And what the heck, it's going to be a fun weekend for all the hams around, including you. I'm very excited. Now, what kind of antenna are we going to put up uh, uh, there outside? I mean, uh, I, I know because uh, once I get my technician, I, I can use the, the two meter and the, and I think I can do some 10 meter. And uh, But I, what kind of, are we going to put an antenna? Are we going to put a high frequency antenna up too? Oh, absolutely. The high frequency antenna will allow sky waves, and that's one of our subjects tonight, to bounce signals off the ionosphere, Leo, and come back down thousands away and here's your band chart uh, for a technician uh, several HF channels of which 10 meters will be a hot one and then uh, going for general class you get all of the bands not full privileges throughout the band but you get a taste of each band and we'll have probably a 10 15 20 and maybe a 40 meter type of beam antenna and oh for 75 meters and 160 meters we'll have a long wire that will run all over your area <laughs> Oh dear, I'm a little nervous. The neighbors aren't going to like that all too much. Uh, no, what about we, we always we we put the antennas up in the middle of the night, so the next morning, Leo, when they go, <laughs> "What is that?" We go, "I don't know. It was there when I got the property years ago." <laughs> and, and how about that six meter band? Because I hear that's a pretty pretty good band too. Six meters is exciting. In fact, this past weekend we were talking to the East Coast double hop, no problem, like you and I are talking. Wow. And, uh, yeah, we'll have a little six-meter beam, probably a three-element. Uh, all of the ICOM and in have six on them, so you'll be able to hear yourself uh, and uh, talk all over the country on six. Wow, this is really exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Uh Now, are you want to test me? Do you want to – I mean, I, I, I have to tell you, I'm not fully ready, but I'm, I'm willing to do whatever you need to do, Gordon, to get me in shape here. All right. Well, you know, today is propagation and uh, the velocity of radio space in the it, speed of speed of it's 300,000 meters per second, 300 million meters. OK, a few zeros don't make a oh, difference. I missed it. Uh, 300,000 kilometers a second. Sorry. <laughs> OK, but that 300 is important because when you go from meters to megahertz and megahertz right. to meters, you divide it into 300. All right. Here is your second question. 10 meters. Is that and during the day or at the 10 meters? You're breaking so, up, Gordon. I, I, I Could you say it again? Because I missed that. OK, 10 meters. Uh, when? to do a little bit of John 10 during the day or the dead of night I think it's going to work day. better day. at night uh, for ground absolutely correct for skyways we do it during the day so oh, that's okay I'm going to study <laughs> alright finally study. Leo your last question on uh, propagation next week we have two questions for radio practice but your oh, question there are four layers, the D, the E, and the two F layers. So what happens when a high-frequency radio wave goes into those layers? Is it reflection or re 
refraction. I believe it's refraction, Gordon. Absolutely. That <laughs> is right. But you're going to do fine later. You should go for general, maybe even pass a general and give the extra class a try. But you're going to be fine. Keep reading um, the book. I'm so excited. It's just really, uh, I can't wait. I'm going to need, though, I have to say, and this is something uh, you talk about a little bit on your audio CD, is that once I, you know, once I pass the test and I get the license, then, then I really want to get some counseling and guidance from all the veteran hams in the, in the area about how to be on the air. I don't want to be, Bob Heil calls it a lid. I don't want to be a lid. <laughs> no, we won't let you be a lid. And by the way, you had greetings from K8. HME, when he talked uh, last week, he made nation. This is just a 30 seconds rate sky wave as well as the tropo wave propagation this past weekend. Oh, so Hawaii. take a listen to Paul. Propagation between Hawaii and the west coast of the United States. 2,500 miles. Oh, did you hear that? Ham Nation. <laughs> and that was uh, Paul in Hawaii, 2,500 miles away via tropospheric ducting. Pretty exciting, huh? That's and really exciting. Was it? Pretty soon yeah. we're not going to need Skype to do this show. We're just going to do it on ham radio. That's the, that's the future. Forget this Internet thing. It's never going anywhere. <laughs> no. There you go. Well, Leo, we you to pass that on uh, all the... Bay Area, the California Rescue Community's uh, net hams are tuned in, and they want a new facility and help you get on the air. So you'll have plenty of coaching. I'm so excited, Gordo. I even ordered, and I think this is probably a good thing to have, the ARRL handbook as well. I want to Absolutely. I wanna, That's the yeah. Bible. Yep. yep. Got to have that one. Got to be on your shelf. Absolutely. Oh. And the rules of the road, too. I got to get That's those, right. too. Yep. All right, well, we'll continue the book and uh, play that uh, audio CD inside the front cover that describes some of the propagation sounds, and we'll see you next week. And then the week after next, you ought to have call letters. Oh, boy, this is exciting. Hey, hey Leo, I still have my call book, but uh, you might want to note what year it was. That looks like an old one right there. What is that, 1967? 57. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's how I learned this hobby, and I got into it big time, and right there is my college education. I carry it with me. I still have it. I use it uh, not every day, but by golly, every week the pages are just uh, flipping around in there. Bob, but, Bob uh, you must have been a kid. You must have been in your teens when you did this. I was four. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. That afraid, was good. I'm never afraid to tell anybody. I was uh, in 1956. I got my license, and uh, I was 15 years old, and it, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because truly, I say it a lot. It, it, ham radio was my college education. Uh, we talked a lot about this uh, yesterday with Scott Wilkinson on the home theater program here on Twit. You might want to go look that up. It was a great show. It gets into a lot of things that Ham Radio did for me. You're going to hear it in a little bit from K3LR. Uh, you're going to hear it from just about every ham how important ham radio was to their career. You go into a radio station, a TV station today, almost every engineer is a ham. Yep. Uh, you met them at our ham reception, uh, yep. Leo. It's and true. what happens there is that <laughs> most of these guys, they aren't engineers by uh, 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 spending four years in a college. These guys were hams, but they can make things happen. And it's kind of funny, Tim Swigert at, at BSW. Uh, he thought it was amazing. He came to the reception a few years ago, and he looked around, and he says, Bob, these guys are all, they're all customers of mine. I thought they were hams. I said, guess what? They're both. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's really fun, and uh, you'll have to uh, get you a nice old handbook. That'll be good. But we're very well, proud of you. The entire chat room is going nuts here. And, I know. Uh, I could see it. You know, I just want to make an invitation to anybody who's ever thought about doing this uh, to join me. Uh, let's do it together. You know, these the this this materials that Gordo puts together. Uh, you can get his stuff. Uh, I got it. I got it from Amazon. 
Uh, but Gordo is also uh, online, and you can get them uh, online if you just look search for Gordon West. Um, these materials made it so easy. I was listening in the car. I'm reading the book at home at night, and uh, I just invite everybody to join me. Let's all be hams together. What do you say? Uh, and when you come to the Twits, uh, the new Twit uh, Brick House, we'll have a, a, a ham station there. You can broadcast from and get yourself a QSL card and all of that. We're gonna we're we're gonna do it upright. Absolutely. And Gordo, I can't wait till he gets a, a Texas bug catcher on the back of his Mustang. And Big mama him, coil. Yep. Got to have that, gonna Leo. Put him one kilowatt in his trunk. And uh, he's going to have like a, a, an ICOM 7000 in the front. And this, this antenna, a bug catcher is about as big around as a paint can. About as big as a paint can, and it's got a hundred inch whip on the top. It's just great when you go through bridges once in a while, and the low flying trees. <laughs> but that's, that's okay. Fantastic. You'll be you'll be running more power from your Mustang than M Zero S A Z just got him <laughs> noticed him here. Uh, he, uh, by the uh, by the way, Leo M Zero S A Z is in the U K, and he's watching and listening tonight. He he can't wait to get to the U, to the United States because they can only run a few hundred watts in the UK. He wants to come over here so he can run a kilowatt and a half. Heck, you'll have that in the trunk of your Mustang. So when he comes over here, <laughs> I can't wait. Well, That's is right. it is? Do you say seventy three guys? And I'll see you next week for the test. I'm excited. Seven three three like Leo. Said, oh, it's not seventy threes. Seven three. Lid. It's plural. seven three. Isn't that right, Gordo? Yeah, not plural. Three. <laughs> Seven, Seven three guys. <laughs> yep. All right. Oh, that Eight. is terrific! What Eight. a great ambassador for Ham Radio we and uh, the great work he does on his so uh, what two hundred AM radio stations tuning him in on Saturday and Sundays. Wow! Thank you, Lee. A million of them on a million of them on the internet. But you That's know, right behind him, when he gets this all done, we're going to have another one, and she's sitting right there in the Twit Studio. And Alex is going to push a button in a minute because we want to introduce Jerry Ellsworth. She's very familiar here on the Twit Network. Hi, guys. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. It's great to be and on with you guys. She, she's one up on us. She is an electrical engineer, and she knows what she's doing. We don't. We just goof around till we blow something up, and then we go, oh, well, we can make it work. So there you go. Welcome, Jerry, to this wonderful thing we call Ham Nation. It's good to, to have you here. Well, what a what a wonderful thing I heard the day you were there. We want you to talk a little bit about a little project you got going. Yeah, a little um Side note on that, I'm an electrical engineer, and that's what I do for a day job. However, I never went to school, and thanks to ham radio operators that took me under their wing when I was 13 or 14 years old, they taught me everything I know about electronics and got, my, got me started. Isn't so, that great? Yeah. That's great. Um, well, I, I know that you are just well-versed in every kind of... Um, a component in the uh, electronics, and you're making your own printed circuit boards. And man, it's living the life that um, many would like to do. And uh, I know that you have a little project going there. With you, you came up with an SDR receiver. You built the whole thing yourself. I mean, this is not a kit. This is a Jerry wow. Ellsworth project, right? Yeah. Inside this box, um, I didn't even know that uh, the Twit Studio was had a ham radio show. I was just bringing this to show it to Leo because it was a cool project I was working on. I've always been fascinated with radios, and I built all kinds of uh, radios from crystal sets to super heads. And this technique ha is, is fairly new. It's within the last uh, couple decades that we've been able to eliminate a lot of the analog circuitry in radios and do it digitally with math in things like CPUs, or in my case, I used an FPGA, which is a field programmable gate array. So I can do um, FFTs and inverse FFTs and convert from time domain to frequency domain and do AM demodulation and FM demodulation. And um, it's amazing how well this works with so little uh, analog circuitry in it. Well, wow. the, the, thing, the thing about that is that uh, the computer is doing most of the work. Is that not right? That's correct. A, a novel... Uh, detection method, um, the TALO detector is what I'm using, does a direct conversion from RF down to baseband, a very low intermediate frequency, so low that 
um, audio cards in PCs can suck in, say, 96 kilohertz worth of bandwidth, and you can see upper and sideband around your local oscillator, and you can use DSP, digital signal processing, to select the, the, the channel that you want to, to receive. And in my case, I'm even doing all of the DSP work in the FPGA. I don't need a PC at all. Although this does have an audio output or a, an output which I can send the baseband into a PC. Yeah, that's great. Now you send it into the sound card and away you go, right? Yeah, and it's it's very amazing that I haven't even put any front end filtering on this. There's no bandpass filtering, and I can jump from, you know, two meters, ten meters AM broadcast band anywhere I want, and it's so selective that um, you get very little interference from from strong stations on neighboring bands. It's it's, it's pretty incredible. That's wonderful. and it's partly because in our super het receivers that were have were the workhorse for a hundred years, you throw away part of the information, and in this type of of uh, detector, you are using both the the in phase and the quadrature phase of the R, the intermediate frequency. So you get more information to work with, and you That's can right. eliminate um, images that you have to have aggressive filtering on and in other receivers. Exactly. Well, we're going to have the Flex guys on here in some future shows. We'll have to have you on with them, and we can have a whole night of SDR. That ought to be a lot of fun. That would be exciting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you coming, and uh, we want to learn more about you. Everybody might uh, go look at Wikipedia because you've got, you've got an incredible history from, what was it, race cars to computers to... Uh, pinball machines? Pinball it, machines, uh, chip design, uh, system level design. If you want to see my my progress as I built this, it took me about three weeks and I logged it all on YouTube. So if you, you look for my name on YouTube, Jerry Ellsworth, J-E-R-I, or um, look for the channel Jerry Ellsworth Jabber, um, you can find my build log on this. I have two YouTube channels that show different projects and most of this particular project is on the the Random Jabber channel. Well, I, I have one question about that. You, you, you've you been so much into computers, and especially the Commodore 64 thing and all the pinball machines. What was the drive that caused you to build an SDR receiver? Are, are you very interested in ham radio uh, or just receiving signals? What, why did you build the SDR receiver, or for, like so many of us, because I could? <laughs> Well, that's part of it. When I was a kid, I built small AM transmitters, and my neighbor and I would ride our bikes as far as we could down the road, counting telephone poles to see how far we could the propagation was, and uh, eventually built transmitters so strong that we couldn't um, ride that far in an afternoon. So then we switched bands and started doing other pirate radio stations, and uh, so analog electronics has always been very fascinating for me. And uh, the ham radio operators were always very generous in, in mentoring me and giving me the tools, um, early like teeth kit oscilloscopes and stuff that were beyond my means as a teenager. So it's a, a, a fuzzy, warm spot in my heart for ham radio. And it's exciting. When I was a kid, I used to listen to the shortwave radio and listen to these strange broadcasts out there and, and uh, imagine that there was some international spy that was... That was sending a communication and I was picking it up and I know it's silly but that's uh, uh no it's that's not part silly. of my fond memories of ham yeah, radio it's not silly and what's really going to be great is when we get you all involved and you become an amateur radio operator and you'll love it well we thank you for your time and bringing your SDR but hang on to it because we're going to have you back and we're going to really dig into that thing so uh we'll uh, we'll talk soon and uh hopefully get to play with your pinball machine at the big opening of the twit uh Brick house. So thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you very much. Gordo, you got any last words for Jerry? Wow. I can't wait till back to ham radio because we have so much to learn digitally on the new electronics. Wow. What a great asset for ham radio. It, it's really super. Well, I want to do, I want to show a picture um, before I bring Tim in. I got this really sweet email. I mean, it. we get so many emails, and I really appreciate them. I want to, everybody to to be sure and, 
and, and keep them coming. But I got this really neat email with the picture, and um, it came uh, a few days ago from KJ4ZFQ. He's number one on the on the chart here on our pictures, and he was telling us that he's a new ham. He just got his technician license, and he recently now upgraded to general. And so many people wonder about, wow, what do I do for equipment? How many tens of thousands of dollars does it cost? Well, he spent $200, and he has a Tempo 2020. And let's see if we can bring the picture up and show you his station. Look at this. Oh, wow. Is this cool or what? A Tempo 2020. How many that bands? Was a, that was a wonderful transceiver. And... Uh, He's got a, a 2900 Yesu. <clears throat> He's got a little handy talkie, but uh, I, I'm really proud of him. He paid 200 bucks for that tempo, and it's working super. He's got a computer, so you see, it doesn't take a lot to get yourself on the air, and uh, you can go at every level. On the other end of the spectrum, I want to introduce to you Tim Duffy. Tim is K3LR. I, I like to think of him as K3 Leo Radio. <laughs> Tim, are you there tonight? I am, Bob. How are you? From sunny western Pennsylvania, where the well, sun is just setting here. It is so nice to have you on. I know you're a busy guy. You travel around a lot. And uh, Gordon, how do you like that one for a station? Wow. Uh, more radios than I've seen in a long time. Hi there, uh, and good to have you with us, Tim, K3 Lima Radio. And, uh, Tim, we've got some questions before we take a look at that big antenna system. And that was from one of our readers indicating that they heard that you had a four square. Now, could you tell us what a four square is, Tim? Well, it, the four square antenna is primarily used on low frequencies where the antennas have to be longer to work, uh, longer waves. So the antennas are larger. And, uh, uh, you know, at, at the start of radio, a lot of guys used just a single vertical antenna. And then along the way, as hams do, somebody said, well, if one is good, I wonder if two, three, or maybe four are even better. So uh, along came four verticals phased together using a, a little electronic circuit, a little passive circuit in the middle of these four verticals that could create gain and directivity. So it could allow you to rotate electronically, just with the electronics, rotate in four directions almost instantaneously. So we can move these arrays around to four azimuths very quickly and efficiently and so was born the Foursquare back in the 60s and it was hams experimenting uh, up in New England and they found a better mousetrap by using four verticals and uh, that was the the birth of the Foursquare. Dana Ashley and uh, Fred Collins W1FC was the uh, was the father of the Foursquare and today they're all over the world and guys will go to islands and set up Foursquare arrays and have outstanding wireless signals on the low frequency bands of amateur radio. And so I'm lucky enough to have several four squares here that we use. And they are, uh, it's just a tremendous antenna that's pretty simple, but requires some ground radials. Uh, but it, uh, it's not a costly antenna, and you're off and running. Wow, that's great. And, of course, the ARRL Antenna Handbook is what a lot of us uh, uh, read over and drool over, seeing all those great antennas. And uh, we just got a, uh, a note from one of our hams that are uh, watching, and they said, how many operating positions do you have at your QTH, your home location? Go ahead. Yes, uh, Gordon, this, uh, this station is designed for multi-multi contesting, and also can be used for emergency communications. And there are 11 operating positions. So 11 operators can man 11 different radios that have 11 computers uh, for logging purposes and also access to the Internet, as well as 11 amplifiers and, you know, 20 different rotors. Uh, you know, the cumulative effect is there are 22 computers here at this station. It takes a lot of computing power. There's... There's software even in the coffee maker at K3LR. 
<laughs> oh boy, that's terrific. And um, with that, um, how many towers and how many individual antennas do you have? Well, we've, Gordon, we've got uh, 50 antennas and uh, there are 13 towers here. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the towers are, are pretty small and some of them are a little taller. But they're all designed for real effective DX uh, distance communications, and um, so I like to like to think that we can hear a mouse sneeze in downtown Tokyo. <laughs> oh, that is terrific! Now I'm going to let uh, Bob call the photos. If you wouldn't mind describing those come up uh, for our listeners, and we have many. Actually, we have probably more listeners than we do viewer listeners uh, on the Twit Network. But if you could describe some of uh, the photos that we're looking at, so Bob, I'll let you go ahead and call for the photos. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want everybody to know that this is a world-class amateur radio station that is known worldwide, and. Uh, how many uh, how many contests have you won in a row? Uh, what, what are some of the awards and things you've done, Tim? Well, it, what you see behind me are, are some of the uh, the plaque awards from some of the competitions that we've uh, that we've won in the United States, and in fact, we have one uh, worldwide win uh, that we had a few years ago. And um, we've operated uh, in the last 20 years in 65 competitions. And uh, we've managed to win 20 of those. And that, to, to win 20 of them being uh, this far away from Europe is, uh, we think is, is a good accomplishment, but it's, uh, it's more the activity and the friendships that we develop over the, uh, the 48 hours of, of the contest and also uh, all of the operators that are involved and the thousands of people that we, we get to talk to over a given weekend all around the world. Well, that that's the whole thing. It's a, it's it's true ham radio, and I know a lot of guys that don't understand contesting, so they hate it when the contest weekends go on and so on. But no, it it's it's a very special part of the hobby. We have a video, and um, let's see if Alex can bring it up for us. This will really tell you uh, uh, what's going on and, and kind of explain. You'll see the four square, and uh, you'll hear. Uh, uh, here's some uh, descriptions of that uh, through this. So, Alex, if you can play that, let's see how we go. My name is Tim Tango India Mike. Over. Started the station in 1987 is when I, I bought the house and the property. And it started out uh, with one tower at about 120 feet. And then uh, I saw that the, this was a very good radio location. So I decided to keep constructing more. And as time went on, we just kept going and going and going. Here is the... Uh the 40 meter tower. It's 190 feet tall. It's got two full size four element 40s on it. Um, one at 190, one at uh, 118 feet. On top of the 40 is a uh, seven element 10 meter beam. So we've got three 10 meter beams on that tower. We're standing in front of the, uh, the 15 meter tower. That's a new tower for us this year. Uh, it's 160 feet tall. It's got four seven element Yagis. So we have 28 elements on 15 now. 80 meter verticals is two four squares. The gain of two four squares going towards Europe or going towards the southwest. So it makes it very, very competitive. We put down this, these ground systems. This is 120 radials under each one of the verticals. They work extremely well, and it's because of that ground system, because of the reflection that we get from the ground system, and we've lowered the ground losses. These two antennas here, the one on the right, is a four square just like that but it's for 20 meters and we just use it for listening only and we haven't walked to the back of your house what about the type the towers behind it the back tower is a 170 foot tower it has three 20 meter beams on it for six elements and so you get 18 elements when you feed them all together there's also the second station antenna for 40 is on there and the second station stack for 15 is on that tower as well I, I've been doing contesting for about 34 years now. This is my one and only hobby. This is what I look forward to. It is a, a big part of my life. It is all about the people and all about the relationships and all about the fact that amateur radio just opens doors for any any type of work or any type of, of other hobbies with computers, 
Um, I wouldn't be in the cellular telephone business if it wasn't for this hobby. So this is a, a key component to my success both uh, in the hobby as well as in professional life. LU8YE from Kilowatt 3 Lima Radio, over. Right now, and, and what's been going on for the past two days, it's been very difficult to sleep. This is the most energetic contest of the season, and uh, it's the first one of the season. There are four that will operate. This is the first one of the four, the other one being the CW end of CQ Worldwide, and then the two ARL DX contests in February and March. But we've made extensive changes since last March when we won the ARL DX phone contest. And that was a three-peat. That was the third time in a row that we had won that contest. So that, and, and we'll be going for number four this March. But to do that, to, to stay on top of the game, you have to constantly improve. Yeah. So the, the week after uh, the ARL DX contest in March, we, were, we had torn down antennas and we were redoing things. And uh, so we have spent literally the last six months improving <laughs> the station, scary. putting up bigger antennas, more antennas, and tweaking and changing and modifying to make it better so that when the guys come here later this afternoon, the station works better than it did. Who are the people you're talking to? I think you're going to find a, a wide variety. There are really encouraging signs of younger people finding the competitive side of this hobby as, as an attraction. And, and want to be involved in this team uh, aspect. When you think about the fact that you're doing this on wireless and you're using the ionosphere, which is going to give you a different contest every time. If we were to hold the contest on the internet, it would be very boring because there wouldn't be that unpredictable element of the ionosphere. You know, you let your mind go with how big can you make an antenna, how efficient can you make the antenna, what can you do to maximize your signal and then maximize your score. Yeah. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming, man. That's what it's all about yeah. right there, isn't it? Competitors. You won last year, won That's year great. And I, I, so many uh, times I hear you guys on the air and you're having such a good time. That was a terrific piece. And, and uh, uh, I, I know there's a lot of that uh, up on YouTube that ICOM put together with you. And uh, I, I encourage all of the the twit uh, family to go check that out uh k3lr on youtube and uh, uh, there's so much more to that station uh, i have a question about you personally you got into the ham radio but you didn't come flying in here as a contester what what how did you start and how did it evolve into contesting what what got you really keyed up about that you know, Bob, um, it was back uh, when I was 13. Um, I had been a ham for a few months, and I got introduced to Field Day, which, as you know, you did uh, last week's show, was on the W3AO Field Day. And Field Day is one of the uh, events that a lot of guys get introduced, not only to the hobby, but to the sport of making a lot of contacts in a defined period of time. And so field day allows you to make a lot of contacts quickly. And it, it's the same thing as driving a race car, um, talking to people very quickly, very efficiently, making sure that you get the information correct, um, logging the information, and then competing against others that are doing the same things from their radio station and knowing that uh, if I'm competing in the 100-watt class of field day, that uh, – my other competitors are also playing by those same rules. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, these competitions depend upon the honesty of the entrants. And uh, at the highest levels, uh, the entrants uh, certainly are, are very honest and the competition is very meaningful. But it was definitely field day uh, where I got introduced to the sport of contesting. And uh, I started very, very small, with a very small station, like that Tempo 2020, and uh, went through high school uh, like that. And really just, I, I always had a dream to build a, a, a nice station, a big station, and little by little, I mean, it was years of accumulating uh, equipment. And it's like when, when you see, uh, you know, Rory McIlroy plays golf, and he does very well. And what we see on TV is the finished product. And what people are seeing here tonight on, on this show is the finished product. What they don't see is 25 years of backbreaking hard work 
uh, of putting this station together. So, you know, this it, it doesn't happen overnight, and uh, and it's certainly one of those things that I'm very fortunate um, to to be in this hobby and to have uh, been around a lot of great people that have helped me along the way. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, we want to have you back again sometime. We're so thrilled to have it. Uh, the time tonight. I, I, I picked up a thing off the ch off the chat room from N3HQB. Gordon, he made a statement, and he said, "A tower is a thing of beauty." I think we've all show, shown everybody tonight. The K3LR has got a whole backyard of beauty. What do you think? <laughs> he sure does. Well, thanks, Tim, for uh, showing us your shack and the 25 years to grow that shack out. And we'll be listening for Kilo 3 Lima Romeo out here on the West Coast. Well, it was great to be on with you guys tonight. This is, uh, this is a lot of fun. I look forward to the future, Bob and Gordon. And, uh, and, you know, every Tuesday night, this is the highlight of the week, uh, tuning into your show. So again, all the best from uh, Western Pennsylvania in, in 73. Roger. Thank you so much, Tim. And w one of these days, Gordo will have to come out and we'll work a contest with you and cause your store score to go down. Because <laughs> the only uh, people that you have on there is people that really know what they're doing when they get there. We'll, we'll just come out and mess around. Uh, we can run the coffee maker, Gordon. That's there what you we go. Can do. And uh, we'll get some help and have it microprocessed. We'll bring well, we're, that's, we'll bring Jerry with us, and then well, we could make some put a pinball machine in there. <laughs> How Precise. much fun! Well, we're going to get old George in here in a little bit, and we're going to get some smoke and solder happening. I I'm really happy about about what's going to happen here on Ham Nation. You know, I started a couple weeks ago with with the smoke and so solder uh, segment, and and we we want to really continue this, but. It's very difficult for us to do this live. You really need to do this where you can go in and, and, and put it on a, on a disc and then edit it and so on. And, man, we got the guy for you. Uh, he's been doing this for a long time on his own little network, and now he's going to be with us every week, we hope. And he'll, as you see, it's very professionally done because he's a broadcast engineer. And I want to introduce to you George. W5JDX from Mississippi. George, are you there with us? Yeah, hi, Bob. It's uh, good to be joining you and Gordon and, and everyone on the show tonight. I've really been looking forward to this. Well, we uh, we want you to be uh, a big part of this thing as we continue to grow the, uh, the audience and bring them more useful uh, information, and that's, that's why you're here because, boy, you've got a great thing going there. Um, so let me see. Um, we've got um, we've got some things going on. I think you, we got a video uh, uh, that might play first, and uh, you want to fire that up, Alex. Let's go to that first and uh, see what's uh, happening here, and uh, get some smoke and some solder happening from W five JDX. Uh, stand by on that video. All right. Uh, and uh, George uh, Gordo here, thank you so much. And we can't wait to see uh, what you're brewing up today. George, tell us what we're going to be looking at tonight. Well, um, you know, when I first talked to Bob about being on the show here, uh, I was thinking, well, a, a good place to begin with if you're going to learn uh, some electronics is learn how to solder. You, you kind of need to know how to do that. And then I went and downloaded last week's episode of Ham Nation, and I noticed that's what he talked about. So uh, anyway, uh, he convinced me to go ahead and, and let's use this video that uh, it, it would be uh, suitable. Um, this is one we did in episode 9 of AmateurLogic.tv, and uh, I, I hope everyone enjoys it and uh, gets a little something out of it. All right. Well, thank Hey, Alex, we'll let you roll the video. Thanks, George. I, I still don't have it at the moment. Uh, okay. Stand by a little longer. Okay. All right. Uh, hey, George, uh, what's the best kind of solder to use these days that's environmentally friendly and will work with my 300-watt uh, uh, weller? Well, <laughs> it depends on what you want to be soldering. Um, you know, I'm still a big fan of uh, the regular old uh, lead solder uh, with rosin or Ezrin core in it. 
Um, I, I do have some, uh, I think it's Kester that I bought recently that is um, a water soluble flux. So when you get through really? soldering, yeah, it's, um, it, it's very easy to clean the flux off of it. And I think there's even some now that's called, uh, uh, no clean that, that you don't have to clean it at all when you're finished. And so, yes, and uh, that's yeah, it's come a long ways, but as I mentioned in the video here, you definitely want to stay away from stuff you find at the hardware store that uh, might be acid core because that'll just eat your electronics up. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, let's see if uh, we've what got about that video. soldering iron. What What's the most important thing about a soldering iron? The most important thing is uh, to have the right temperature, but keep it clean. You don't want a dirty soldering iron. Uh, you really can't do very well with that. Have you had uh, Have you had any luck with uh, with some of the the things that you're seeing in Radio Shack and places like that? The little are there any differences to to watch for? Well, I I think uh, probably most of what you'd find at Radio Shack today is okay. Uh, and any electronic supply store is going to have some uh, some good tools. But uh, the things that you might buy at Walmart or, or somewhere like that, I would kind of shy away from those. I bought one when I was a kid and never got the first solder connection to stick with it. Oh, wow. Well, we, uh, we want to be able to do this. We're having trouble with this video, bringing it up. And i tell you what we're going to do. Um, we're going to hold this till next week because this video, I want to be able to show the whole thing. And... Uh, uh, we want to make sure it's proper, so we'll uh, we'll do that entire video next week and uh, do some things there. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is when you do any kind of project, uh, do you uh, do you clean the board with anything special? Uh, what do you do before you solder anything? Is there a special thing that we need to do? Well, if if the uh, the board is old and tarnished, uh, I like to use a little Scotch Brite or, or something like that on it to kind of polish it up. And then I might use a little denatured alcohol uh, to kind of uh, clean over it and uh, and get a good clean surface there. You, you certainly don't want uh, you know a tarnished board. You'll, you'll have problems getting the solder to stick to that. And in some cases, not usually on a PC board, but you can buy a uh, uh, solder paste, which is actually um, uh, a flux, that you can add a little bit of that to it if you've got a particularly difficult uh, job you're working on, and that'll help the solder begin to flow a lot quicker. Absolutely. Okay. So it, it's okay, Gordo, if you take your project in uh, to Susie's kitchen sink and tell her you have to clean it. She won't run you out. You know that, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> Susie, luckily, in fact, be up there and opening so everyone will have a chance of uh, <laughs> one and only engineer in back of me. But uh, one last question for George. And George, uh, if doing small components on very small boards, do you recommend a variable temperature soldering iron like a 20 iron with different tips? Uh, yeah, I, I use a soldering station myself. You don't need a super expensive one. I've got a little uh, weller that I use. That'll be uh, in the video next week, and, you know, it's $50 uh, and, and does a great job. I've used a two or $300 station before that really didn't do any better. It just had uh, uh, a thermometer on it so that you could see the temperature, but I've gotten used <laughs> to how to set mine, and it'll do anything from uh, tiny surface mount uh, PC board work, or I can put a bigger tip in it and really crank it up, and I've soldered PL259s with it before. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's what I use my big gun for, but I can do it if I've uh, got enough time with the smaller ones. Well, thank you so much, George, and I know a lot of our listeners and viewers will look forward to your video next week. Yeah, I, one thing before you leave us, we've had a couple of guys in the, sh in the uh, chat room ask, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, when you've been become licensed, uh, where you live in Mississippi, somebody asked that question. Give us a little bit of background about what where you uh, started into ham radio and all that. Well, uh, actually, I did it backwards of a lot of guys. I got into broadcasting first. Uh, 
I got a job when I was 16 years old as a disc jockey at a local radio station and worked there about uh, five years uh, while I was uh, finishing school. And I really was more into engineering, but you know the only kind of job a 16-year-old was going to get would be a disc jockey. So that got me involved in uh, broadcasting. And uh, the owner of the station, who uh, recently became a silent key, he was K5VAK, was a ham. And his son was a ham, as well as a 14-year-old kid that they hired there at the station shortly after me. And I already knew about ham radio, but that kind of got me interested in it. And my friend Clint let me borrow his Smith Code Course uh, LP, you know, 12-inch record. Only thing is, he could not find the book that went with it, so it didn't do me much good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so uh, I, I didn't get into ham radio at that point. I did buy an ARRL handbook back then, but there were no other hams in the small town that I lived in. The, uh, the radio station I worked at was about 30 miles away in a little larger city. Uh, so I just kind of tabled it to the side. I was uh, playing music, uh, playing drums and bands and such during the same period, so I was fairly well occupied. And uh, then when I got out of school, um, I, I went to work at a television station as an engineer for about five years, and uh, then I left there and uh, became chief engineer of what is now the uh, Clear Channel group of stations here in Jackson, Mississippi, and I live in the Jackson area, and uh, that was about 1985. And in 1991, you know, the uh, FCC dropped the code requirements for the technician's license, so I no longer had an excuse. And uh, my friend Jim, N5SPE, called me up like on a Friday night and said, uh, they've dropped the code, I've got the study materials, they're giving the test Sunday, and we're going to take it. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> well, that's great. What city are you in? I'm in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. It's uh, near the center of the state. And uh, I would like to mention that uh, for the past five years, I've been doing a podcast uh, with a couple other guys here in the area. Uh, Jim, who I mentioned earlier, N5SPE, and my good friend Tommy, N5ZNO. And we met another guy uh, down in Melbourne, Australia, uh, Peter, VK3PB, and he has joined us in this. And for the past five years, uh, we've been producing um, videos, usually 30-minute to an hour shows, and uh, they're pre-produced. They're not done live, so it takes a great deal of time. And we've covered a lot of amateur radio subjects and a lot of stuff that's not amateur radio. We Basically, just wanted to get out there and do some fun things and, and show people what we were doing and, and hopefully steer them in the direction of ham radio as we went along. And, uh, that's worked out pretty good for us. We've, uh, we've had a number of, uh, in, um, hams who weren't active get back active again. And a lot of new people have, uh, you, you know, decided to pursue the hobby. And, and so that's been great for us. And, and we've had a, a big time with it. It's www.amateurlogic.tv if uh, some of the viewers here would like to check that out. Not to compete with Ham Nation. It's a totally different kind of show, and we don't have weekly episodes. We do good if we get one out every month or so. Well, but, it's, uh, a, it's a great site. We've been uh, looking at that, and that's why you're here, because you uh, bring a very different aspect to ham radio, how to build things, and we want to do that. So we appreciate you being here. Next week we'll get uh, the, have time for the video, and we'll get it on properly. And uh, maybe by then George will be able to congratulate Leo, because he might have his call by then. Who knows? <laughs> Thanks <laughs> so much for being here. Uh, thank you, Bob, and I, I really enjoyed it, and you too, Gordon, and I'm looking forward to next week. Okay. Good deal. Well, we, we have just a few minutes, but before we go, uh, Gordo, we better get a few of these shack pictures. I know you had a whole bunch of them also, and um, I think uh, Alex has got those all keyed up, ready to go. And, uh, all we're right, bring yeah. In, Sh bring show in a us your shack. Yeah. The first one is from Bogota, Colombia. That's HK3 
O-Z. And John is on 20 meters a lot. He has a great voice, and his station is just so elegant. He sounds so yeah. good. And he's been using for years the, uh, the HC-5 side of his gold line, and he just he's terrific. And John's from down in Bogota. That's a nice station, Gordo. Look at that. Wow. Hotel nice. Kilo 3, Oscar Zulu. Exactly. And uh, the uh, next slide, number three, is from uh, Petrolia, Pennsylvania. It's K3AFR. And again, as you see, these are very, very nice stations, and yet we're not looking at a huge investment here. Looks like he's running a little power, though, don't you think, Gordo? What's that little box? Yeah. I think he's got a thousand five hundred, definitely. Uh huh. And that's quite legal, and it's quite fun. And then we've got Tom Heights. Time is uh, Tom is from Iowa. N Z zero O. That's a tough, tough one to say. N C zero O. <laughs> and it's uh, Shellsburg, Iowa. But what a nice setup! And and you'll notice that every one of them have a computer because we have to be able to get to qrz.com to look up calls, and uh, we hasten all of you to do that. If you want to look up anybody's call, you can find out what city they're in. You're not going to find out their phone number or what kind of car they have or all of that kind of stuff, but you will be able to find what city they're in so you can turn your antenna there, and uh, it, it tells you anything you need to know uh, about their station uh, as you work them and what their address is so you can send them a QSL card. That's a nice station also. Look at that, Gordon. Wow. Good, uh, good shot there. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, that's really neat. Well, we have just about got our time uh, wrapped up here. Next week, Carol Perry is going to join us. <laughs> There's not enough time to even talk about Carol, is there? What a fascinating lady, Gordo. Yep, her call sign, WB2MGP, Mighty Good Professor. She's a riot with kids. She's with Radio Club of America as well, avid ham, and a great instructor of kids. And she's going to give us some great secrets. We've got some audio of her talking to uh, some of the space programs as well. So we can't wait to have Carol aboard next week. Yeah, that's going to be a good show. So you want to join all that. We're going to start into some of this stuff with the young uh, classes that she has there. She's turned out thousands of hams, I think, in her 20 years or plus that she's been teaching. Uh, great lady, and uh, we're, we're happy to have her here. And in the future, there's just so many things going on uh, that, that we'll bring to you. So stay tuned. Keep your uh, your cards and letters coming because we're here to uh, to try to uh, bring you the information you need. Uh, join so many of the guys and gals that we're getting emails from that they're getting their license. That, and, and Gordon, uh, did you notice this week how many have come back into the hobby because of watching Ham Nation? What, wasn't that great news? It is, and we're always happy to uh, read your emails. And uh, as soon as we get Leo on the air, we'll have him first here, and then who knows, you'll probably be able to work him on 20, 40, and 75 as well. So, Leo, uh, keep on studying. And, uh, Bob, uh, thanks so much for the great uh, cast tonight. And viewers and listeners, thank you. And that's Susie in the background in Six Golf Lima Foxtrot. And we hope to see all of you at the grand opening up in Petaluma soon. That's going to be great. You know, Leo's going to end up like Art Bell uh, in that, in that, let me finish this, <laughs> in that um, he's going to finish one of his twit broadcasts on the Internet. He's going to walk over to the ham radio station. And I think that's why I wanted to put it in the back of one of the little back rooms. He says, no, I want it right up front. Well, he wanted it right close to him so he can finish his broadcasts on, on the twit network or, Go sit down and uh, get on 75 or 20, and we can finish uh, talking to him there. And that's exactly what Art did for years when he was on his uh, radio broadcast, coast to coast. He'd get on there late night. He'd be on 75 meters till daybreak. It was a lot of fun. Thanks very much, everybody. We appreciate you being here. Help us spread the word. And uh, you two join us. We're, th this is too much fun for just uh, uh, a few uh, 
hundred thousand of us to uh, to have uh, all to ourselves. So we want you to come along. Seven three Gordo K the WB six NOA from K nine EID. Seventy three. Keep listening to one forty five eight hundred. The space shuttle and the International Space Station. They should be on the air this week. One forty five eight seventy three. WB6NOA, clear. So long, everybody. Bop, bop, bop.